Back in 2020, I sold my £1 million IT business, which I spent the last nine years growing from the back of my living room. And so in this video, I wanted to run you through and explain why. Like, why would someone who's running a successful business, turning over a decent amount of income and like, winning awards, whose business who got me to a point in life that I never thought I would get to? We won an award. Again. <laughs> so here are five reasons why I sold my business and potentially five reasons why you might want to as well. Now, the first reason which started me off on this whole journey of selling up was one of those days that every business owner has. Like it's the day that you walk through the door after a long day at work and you just say, kids, I am done. Like today is the day we're going to sell up and we're gonna move abroad. Now, I love helping people. It is the reason why I get out of bed in the morning. It's the reason why I've done what I've done and continue to do what I do now. But as the company grew, like year over year, we took on more customers, we took on more staff, and I realized that over time that I, I just wasn't enjoying it anymore. A problem would come up with a customer or we'd be pitching to renew a contract for another year or one of our staff members would have a Barney with another staff member and then someone would be fucking crying or like having a mental health breakdown. But without getting into details, the trigger for me and the reason number one for why I sold my business was just one of those bad days, which we all have. Now, what led on to it becoming a serious decision was reason number two, because for whatever reason, this time when I came home to say, it, I'm done, me and my wife got chatting and we just thought to ourselves like, how much would it take? Like, how much is enough? Like, everyone has these grand visions of growing a multi-million pound business, like hiring teams of people, having a sea of happy customers and happy staff, all being able to make everyone happy around you and like proud of what you've achieved. Now this is like, pushed onto us from every direction as a business owner, like how to grow your business, how to find new customers, better customers, bigger customers, more money, more staff, more, more, bigger offices, fancy cars, posh networking events. Like there's such a huge focus in every business group out there to grow when actually the thing that many businesses need to do are just maintain, like live with a healthy balance of work and like living your life. You don't need to grow. You, you don't always need more. Now, instead, when you sit down and forget all of these like self-imposed like, visions of glory. Instead, ask yourself, what do you actually want out of life? Like there is no point working like this for the next like 20 years, getting ourselves through to retirement, only to then realize that the best years of our lives have passed already. And now we're like too old to enjoy ourselves. Our kids are all grown up, they've all moved away. So we looked at our business as it was, and we asked ourselves, what does that number need to be for us to get back some time? Like how much does it cost to pay off our mortgage, have some great holidays, enjoy some time with our kids without worrying about this constant stress of having this business to run. Now, I guess this approach like flipped company valuations on its head. Like, so instead of asking how much is my company worth, we were asking how much is it worth to get our lives back? And this then led us on to reason number three. And this has really dawned on me ever so much more after selling my business, but I still kind of knew it at the time. Now, profit margins, certainly in the world of IT and really any business where you're selling time for money are very, very thin. And I guess the only exceptions to the rule here are solicitors who basically charge whatever the f they want and people will still pay it. Like it's quite common to pay 400 or 500 per hour for them to write you a contract. And even though they wrote the exact same contract for someone else yesterday, they have to charge you thousands to write the same words on a different piece of paper for someone else. Like that's just, that's just expected somehow. But paying for someone to look after the infrastructure that your business runs on, that would nearly collapse instantly if someone wasn't doing their job to protect it and manage it, barely worth over a hundred pounds per hour. And in many cases, I see people struggling to charge even half of that. And some people even charging as little as 10 pounds per user per month, which is just insane. And in my eyes, that's just a quick recipe for a business that won't be staying in business for much longer. And you've also got ever growing overheads to take on customers. Well, now you need to hire more staff. Now you need more customers to fill the work capacity up. And now you need more staff because you're too busy. And it's just a never ending cycle. Now I remember making the same, if not more profit, in the first couple of years of business than I did with a team of people around me. And it's a common conversation I have with a lot of business owners. You'd have a way more profitable business if you could just cherry pick a few of your customers who value, you know, you do what you do and you just leave everything else behind you just to work on your own with those few cherry pick customers. So many people growing these types of businesses aren't actually making much profit, but instead they're having to grow their business to a valuation that then pays them back once they finally sell. Which, going back to reason number two, when is enough enough? Like busting your ass for 20 years to finally sell your business and make like a million quid, great. 
but you've lost 20 years of your life to that business. Like if I was to ever start an IT business today, it would look very different to the one that I sold in 2020. And actually, if you're interested in what that might look like, comment down below with your questions and subscribe to this channel. And I'll put that video out very, very soon. Because reason number four was all about spending time with my family. Now my kids were and still are quite young, with my business, I typically go on at like half seven in the morning and then not get back until six or half six each day. I did always make sure I took Friday afternoons off, but that's not the same as having the freedom and like flexibility to be there just so much more. Now, at the time we sold the business, we had maybe one to two more years before they got sucked into the school system, like here in the UK, which basically means we can't take them out of school and holidays get very, like very expensive, like three times the price. Now we all know what happened in 2020 and 2021. So our plans didn't really work out in terms of like the holidays, but just having the freedom now to take the kids to school, pick them up at like any time and just be more involved in their lives than I would otherwise is just priceless. And then reason number five for me, like really it boiled down to, I just wasn't going to marry this business. Like it's the same feeling I had with this ex-girlfriend of mine. I, you know, I, I loved her, she was great, but she just wasn't gonna be the one that I marry. Like I'd rather see my business go to someone else who did have the passion to continue the work I've been doing, to look after the staff and look after the customers the way I did. And it wasn't fair to all of them for me to stick with it, when I just, I didn't really wanna be there anymore. Now in hindsight, the business didn't go to someone who looked after it the way I'd hoped, but kind of like hoping that the next boyfriend or girlfriend would be like better than you are. You just don't have any control over that, but that's a, another video for another time. So my advice, if you are currently sitting there with a business, one that you've poured absolutely everything into, but you actually hate it, you hate your job, you hate how much of you personally that it consumes, my piece of advice here is that it doesn't have to be this way at all. Now, yes, society puts the pressure on to you to work harder and longer, to grow bigger and better, and then you will be a success. But the honest truth is that nobody really gives a shit about you. Like, honestly, not outside of your close friends and family anyway. And those who do give a shit about you, well, they're gonna respect you just as much for selling and getting away from a job that you hate than for running a business that you love. Until next time.